It's 811 on Channel 957 with Connie and Curtis. Hello! It's 32 degrees right now. Clouds today, maybe some scattered snow. It's gray. 30s. We're in the 30s yeah. as the high temperatures for the next week. Yesterday, I wore shorts to work and I had to wear a winter coat out to Fajita Republic in the afternoon. <laughs> I left here, meaning the station, around 12 yesterday. Mm-hmm. It was 50. Three degrees. Mm -hmm. And as I was driving, it started to pour rain. Mm -hmm. And it was 47 when I got home. Yeah. That is a drop. (laughs) I don't like it. I don't like it. And I was wearing shorts. So I came in. It got super gusty downtown around noon yesterday. So I'm walking from the Gram to my car. Right. And uh, some people get out of their car and they have their coats on already. They're ready for winter. Mm -hmm. And I have shorts on and a sweatshirt. And I say, looks like winter's almost here because it's so blustery. Like they are losing their bags and things in this Yeah, when you got to Fajita Republic, you had jeans and a winter coat on with sandals. Yeah, I still have sandals on today as well. Because you got the hot foot? I get hot feet. Mm -hmm. Like my feet get all sweaty and hot and I don't like it. And stinky. And then a little stinky. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. No. Right? No. I just, uh, since I discovered sandals in about 10th grade, pretty much I just wear sandals. Yeah, somebody said to him the other day, are you going to be wearing those all winter long? And I'm like, he's done it in the past. Right. Yeah. The bad thing is shoes are not meant, like sandals are not meant to withstand a winter Mm -hmm. uh, with all the, the moisture and the salt and everything. So, like, it ruins my sandals, mm-hmm. and it's sad. So uh, we'll see what happens. The first time ever that I broke a pair of sandals in the winter, like I bought them in August, mm-hmm. and by June they were done. They were garbage. And I took them to the store where mm-hmm. I bought them and said, are these supposed to deteriorate like this uh, in this amount of time? Okay. And they were flabbergasted. They're like, no, no, they shouldn't. Uh, but then it got down to like I had to file the complaint with the people that were going to give me new ones. Okay. And they said, well, when do you wear them? Like, how many days a week? And I was being honest. I'm like, I wear them every day. You were being honest? I shouldn't have been, and that's the last time I was honest (laughs) with someone who asked me a question in a poll or some sort of uh, form like that because that burned Uh me. Oh, well, if you wore them every day, of course they were going to deteriorate. You get nothing. Oh. And I had a bad taste in my mouth. Then from A, telling the truth, and B, wearing those sandals. I have not gotten that kind again. Ever again. My mom used to say she loved Hudson's so much. Okay. Because you could have a pair of pants. You buy a pair of slacks at Hudson's. Yeah. Ten years later, you take them in and something had ripped or it had worn. And they would take them? They would take them back. uh, I forget what store does that now. One of my friends got a part-time job. At the store. I think, I think Macy's does it. I think Bed Bath & Beyond is what I'm thinking okay. of. Okay. And uh, as part of the training, they were told, anytime somebody has a return, you take, take the return. Back. And I was like, that brilliant. is very smart. I would shop at that store for sure. I mean, like, why don't people market that if they really actually right, do because that? Because they don't want people to just return all their stuff. But it's brilliant. I mean, so anytime you have a return, and yeah. I bought one pair of shoes that was too small, mm-hmm. and I thought that they were good. I bought them for a vacation, mm-hmm. and I wore them around the store, and I liked them, and I'm like, yeah, these are fine. And then on the vacation, I had to buy another pair of shoes because they were too small. Right. They did not work for me. Mm-hmm. They were too narrow. I thought they were going to get bigger because when you first put a pair of shoes on, like, yeah, shoes hurt a little bit, and then they stretch out. So these did not, mm-hmm. and I wanted to take them back to the store where I did, and it had been like three months, and they wouldn't take them back. Hmm. I'm like, they. I only Are wore those them. the ones that you wore to Disney? Yes, and that's all you, I did. Curtis got little black dots on his toenails. Yeah, it pinched like my bruises. feet so oh. bad. Dan has those on his toenails right now, and he doesn't really know why. His shoes are too tight. Yeah, but we don't know which pair. He doesn't wear the See? same pair every day. See, and so I, know. that's where I go sandals now. So I wear sandals all the time, mm-hmm. and then I put these tiny little shoes on, and, and there I am. Maybe because Dan made the transition from sandals to shoes. I think he was working outside. Yeah. Something. I don't know. Boots. But he's now he's like, look at those. When are these dots going to leave my toes? And I said, Curtis had them for like a year. I did. The bruise <laughs> never went away, remember? But it moved. Remember how yes, it moved it, around? Yeah, it was like it grew out or something. It, it was did. weird. It was the weirdest thing. I yeah. had a uh, an under the nail bruise mm-hmm. and it did move its way yeah. out That's the That's what Dan's the doing toe. right now, yeah.
crazy. Very sexy. Because his shoes, it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, Katie was so turned on, too. I mean, it it worked. Uh, it was. Uh, you guys are was, the hottest men I know. Hey, yeah, you ever get that where your feet get pinched by your shoes and you bruise? That's hot. Ladies love that. Ladies are always looking for bruised foot. Yeah. <laughs> that's bruised that's foot. what they, yeah. You got bruised foot? Come on. You're in. Connie and Curtis. Seven on the new channel, ninety-five-seven on a very cold Monday. So cold, not so... Monday, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday. Wow, it feels like not a Monday, Monday though, doesn't it? No. Oh, it doesn't feel like a Monday. I was thinking it kind of does because it's gray and gloomy <laughs> and like it's Monday. One of our coworkers came in today and he was saying how he uh, th- before the show this morning, early, 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 and he was saying how he loves. Gloomy weather. Right. And I said, me too. Yeah, and you, Curtis gives me so much grief. I do, because you know what? You don't need to celebrate the crap that is the Michigan winter. You know, you get so excited. You just, you love the seasons changing. I do. That's And your where people thing. go, people argue with me all the time. Like, no, you really wouldn't miss them. And I go, yes, no, I really would. Okay. I really would miss them. Let's let's put you on Hawaii. I would miss them. For a year and see how much no, you miss it. No, I would miss it. I like the colors of the leaves. I like all, I right. love color tours. I love cool weather. I love you sweaters love and color, boots. Color tours? Yes, I love sweaters and boots. I love jackets and coats and right. wintry handbags. Yes. Oh. You love everything that reminds you of your youth. You know, you you if you have, if you have one good fun time something, you want to relive it and get it over and over again. I like, did not love handbags and shoes. Well, I love shoes in my youth. Like s- cider mills. I love cider mills because you did that as as a kid. You did. Don't that we all up. love happy memories from our youth? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. But like, if my happy memories were sitting on a beach, I would want to. But sit I on was the beach. at. Th- I lived on a beach. I was right. there all the time. I had right. a boat. So, yeah, next argument, please. Okay. Argumento. You're just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I like being, um, I don't know, I like being snuggly. Okay. Yeah, and you do I'm a like snuggly, to snuggly. And, and I, I, like to, I like to hustle and the bustle. Like, I am dreading already the first morning where it takes me an extra 15 uh-huh. minutes to come into work. I was work. thinking about that last night because I thought maybe it was going to be slippery. Did you wake land. up earlier? No. No, and I'm not going to no. either. No. I, I can make this promise to you. I'm never going to leave my house early, okay? Uh-huh. Unless, like, if we get a foot of snow. If you get ready early. If we knew that, like, a foot of snow was coming, right. I would leave my house early. But I'm well, just going to Well, we get here do... an hour before the show anyway, yeah. so you have some lead time I mean, in I there. I got plenty of lead And time. I was trying to figure out last night, how because it usually takes about 20 minutes to get to work, and I was trying to figure out last winter how, Remember, how many minutes extra... Forever. But it really didn't take that much longer. It would me. Like, I remember it being an extra 15 or 20 minutes. Well, that's because usually in inclement weather, you don't even slow down. No. And then I get all slidey, and then I, I have to. Yeah, I had my cruise locked on 83. <laughs> I did that one time and realized that <laughs> and that. And it was pouring. And realized that was a mistake. And you were hydroplaning. I was. It was dangerous. Uh, so now, yeah, I had one road that I would drive on that the plows, like the plows and I got there at the same time. Yeah. And if they were going my way, Perfect. If they were coming at me, I I had some trouble on that road. <laughs> so I have switched up my route this summer. So uh-huh. we're going to see, and I did it just to get ready for winter. I'm going to see if this okay. new route is better and what there is. Uh, because I don't know if the plows even go on these roads that I'm driving on now. I've never been on them in the winter. Mm. So we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. But like my neighborhood, uh, the plows definitely don't come around my neighborhood right. that early in the morning. Right. And there were times I couldn't even get out of my neighborhood. <laughs> So we'll see. Oh. I have a new car though now, so I mean, right. it'll be a different, different thing. But I'm never leaving early. Well, good. It would throw me, even though I've been waking up at three twenty, three twenty every day. Three twenty. Why? That, that's when I wake up. Okay, so that's when my body tells me to wake up. Okay. Three twenty. My alarm goes off at four twenty-five. Mm-hmm. So I always go, "Oh, body, you're crazy," <laughs> and then I go back to sleep for like an hour and five minutes. Okay. But every single day, three twenty, I wake up. I don't know what it is. That's weird. That's like when my body clock. So on the weekends, I wake up at 3.20 and I'm like. Phew. Maybe you're just hot or something and that's that what wakes be. you up. could be. Maybe the heat kicks in at 3.20. You know, like every time you wake up, it's not. Because I wake up for lots of different reasons. Okay. If there's a loud snore. Dan's on you. Stinky fart. <laughs> Get off of me. Has a fart. Something. The smell of a fart ever woken you up? Oh, all the time. Do you think you wake up from the noise of it and no. then you you smell it? Nope. I snuggle down in my covers and go, are you instantly awake and yelling? 
See? That's Disgusting. awesome, though. That's awesome. When you get Dutch oven. I walked oven, by him yesterday, and I, I just stopped and looked at him, and I said, are you kidding me? And he goes, I was hoping you wouldn't smell it. <laughs> <laughs> he was a little guy. I, uh... <laughs> Oh, this is the story of my life. I farted so bad in my car yesterday. So I'm driving, uh, and, and I fart so bad that I know I need to let the windows down. Yeah. Because otherwise I'm going to smell like fart when I get to the store. Right. So I'm like, I need to do this. So I am at, it's raining at this point. Mm-hmm. I'm at a stoplight. I roll down the window, and the guy next to me looks over and just starts laughing. Because he, he knew. knows. <laughs> he knows why I rolled my window down. That's funny, because I would never think. Oh, that guy must have farted, and that's why he's rolling his window in down the in the rain. rain. Do you think he really knew? Is that a guy thing? I, I, I It was my thing, so I assume that okay. he probably does that as well. Is that what you would think, Nick, if you looked over at Curtis and, and you didn't know him? And Being ro- as gassy as I am, I'm in the same page, yeah. Yeah. Really? This guy probably knew that that- Because why at, else would he be laughing? I was airing out the car, exactly. So he turned, and just, <laughs> then the light turned green, and I drove, I let, a, let a little wind get in, and then rolled the window back up. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we're fine. It's now just, I can go to the store. And, I, and that stinks so bad. That's weird. Because you don't want to. But I've never smelled someone who smells like that bad. It smells like fart. Right. <laughs> Have you ever smelled somebody who smells like fart who hasn't farted? No. No. I don't think so. So it's it's just in it's your in head. It's in your head. Where yeah. you think, oh, I'm going to smell like this. Because if you go to like Subway and work there, you smell like bread. Right. If you work at a fryer, you smell like oil. <laughs> so you think if you were farting all the time, you smell like fart. But I've never smelled someone who I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't want to hang out with uh, with Rick. Rick stinks like farts. <laughs> <laughs> I've never said that. Did you, do you remember that fart spray that used to be yes. like? Yes. Uh, yeah. Need, I don't know. You just made me think about. We fart need spray. some of that. We need to get some. It totally here. smelled like farts. And it would. It just would. And even that wasn't as bad as Dan's fart. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Dan, Dan is a magical man. Uh, and we all we all have that power deep inside of when us. When we were uh, visiting his family, his family lives in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Now most of his family. And when we were visiting them earlier this summer, <laughs> his sister. We were at his sister's house. Okay. All of a sudden, I'm in the house. I'm at the other end of the house. It's a ranch. So I'm, I'm in the kitchen, and her, you know, the bedroom's on the other side of the house. Okay. And I, I hear <laughs> this, like, struggle against the wall. Like, something, okay. somebody is struggling. Okay. And then I hear her, his sister, yeah. who is 35 years old. Okay. Screaming, let me out of here! <laughs> Did Dan trap her? And she comes running. Like, it took her minutes to get out. He locked her in the bedroom and farted in there (laughs) and would not let her out of the bedroom. And she was so mad. She was screaming and running. Oh, my gosh. Still, I'm like, 20 years later, you can still drive your sister insane. Isn't it great having a sister to do that (laughs) stuff to? I I was just glad it wasn't me for once. My sisters always get me back. We're all the same. Oh, yes. Girls definitely do that. Not as bad as you guys. Oh, they, I can't even. You don't know my up. sisters, yeah. really, and yeah. my, my daughters. Like I didn't think that women did it either, because uh, Katie like doesn't. And she pretends to be all grossed out. Right. But then you have three daughters. Everyone is doing it. Right. Like they do it. Yeah. Are they stinky? Oh, oh, yeah. so stinky. Really? Like like mine. What? So I don't know maybe where it Katie... just, Maybe they just get it from you. Maybe it's my jeans. <laughs> Well, it's in your jeans my, for sure. My jeans stink so bad, <laughs> and they now have smelly maybe, jeans. Maybe too. that's what it is. Oh, maybe they got the smelly jeans from their <clears throat> dad. Yeah, I don't. I didn't think girls were that bad. Oh my goodness. Because I'm not that bad. They will shut down like parts of the house. They're that bad. Like if they're all in the basement after we've had like chili night or something. It smells like if Dan and I were hanging out watching the uh, the Spartans game. Uh, it'd, be, okay. it'd, be, it'd be the same thing. Really? And it's like mm. it's and it, so I said to Katie, "Yeah, you always pretend that you don't do this." Yeah. I rest my case, <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor. Connie and Curtis. So Magic on Channel 957. It is 8:48 with Connie and Curtis. And you know we like uh, BuzzFeed for the quizzes that we take, like mm-hmm. the, the stupid ones, like uh, how Alex from Target are you? Which I didn't work at Target. Is so- there? One about that there, now. There was a, a like, couple weeks ago when that's he was hilarious. in the news, so I took it and I don't work at Target, so I was not very Alex right. at Target, and that's all the questions. Like, where do you work? And it was uh, not Target or Target, and I didn't. But they <laughs> have not just, Alex from Target. They have just posted the uh, seventeen rankings, the one through seventeen, the definitive ways to flirt with your crush. I thought this would be helpful. Mm. Normally in springtime we talk about crushes, but you're wondering maybe how to uh, how to pick up the guy or girl that you got your eye on. 
1 through 17. I'll start at 17. Who posted this? This is BuzzFeed. Okay. Uh, the number 17, yeah. leave them a voicemail. You can be kind of witty. You can you can say something like, hey, uh, maybe we could go out. Maybe you talk like a uh, like you're in a movie. You know, mm-hmm. some movie lines. Voicemail number 17. Talk like you're in a movie. Facebook pokes. Number 16. Do people still do? Yes, I know people still do that because they do it to me. But You get poked, so they're flirting with you. I only see it like like right now. I just Something popped up yesterday and it said, 18 people have poked you. And I'm like, what? It's always people that like I don't talk to anymore. I think it's more just like, hey, remember me? Yeah, they just start saying, think it. They, they're looking for. I never look at that section of Facebook, but then all of a sudden it'll okay. pop up and I'll have that many posts. Well, and it's funny because the BuzzFeed uh, article here says that poking hasn't really been a thing since 2008. Right. And even then it was weird. Yeah. But uh, the people who poke you now are poking just to get your attention. It's like, hey, here I am. Number 15 is writing you a Facebook message. Okay. Which sometimes you don't see. Hi, and Curtis. How are you? Like, if you don't have Messenger, I don't have Messenger. Yeah. So if I get a Facebook message, I see that it came, mm. but I can't read it on my phone. So I have to wait till I'm on a computer, and then I read. Yeah, it. I avoided Messenger as long as I could. What you still have it? Avoid it? Yeah, I've got it. It's fine. Get rid of it. It's it was fine. like slowing down my uh, my whole thing. LinkedIn request is the number fourteen way to flirt with somebody. Now I don't even know if those are real. The LinkedIn we get LinkedIn requests all the time. We do. Hey, join and me. And we're on not on. No, we're not on it. No, we're not on. So it wants us to. Hey, join LinkedIn. And it's like we're not going to join LinkedIn. Thank you. Snapchatting is the number thirteen way to flirt with somebody. You send them a little chat, maybe a video. Hey, thinking of you. It says it doesn't need to be nude. You can just send them a picture of what <laughs> they're doing. You know, well, that's good. And we, uh, with Connie and Curtis, we're on Snapchat. Yeah. We don't really snap, Mm-mm. but we chat. I mean, we'll look at it at mm-hmm. what you send us. We don't really send anything back because it's on my phone. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm at my house, and he's really bad at social media. Well, I'm at my house drinking a beer watching TV and you Snapchat me, what am I going to do? Snapchat a picture of me, here I am on my couch. Yeah, like you I, should. I got a very boring existence is you what should. I'm saying. Or, hey, I'm at the store. Or now I'm at an antique shop. Or now I'm on a bike ride with my family. Hey, let me snap you. <laughs> I don't, uh, but we do get a lot of snaps every day. Probably about, uh, probably about 30 people yeah. snap us a day. You should snap back. It's just so boring. I don't think so. I think you're kind of like flat Stanley. They would like if you're I were all over the place. You're like flat he, Curtis. I could be. Okay, here's where I am. And here I just I'm at the Graham. I'm going through the Graham by myself I today. Did, I did do that. It was oh, a good time. Oh, now I'm walking around downtown. Oh, no. Fine. From here on out, if, I'm you, watching... if you snap us. Because like if you tweet us, that's on my phone, too. So I will tweet you back. I will write you back on the Twitter. Right. But I, in Snapchat, I just feel weird about it. But done. Starting today, if you Snapchat us, I will send a picture of whatever I am doing. You should just send a picture of what you're seeing right at that moment. Here's what I'm seeing right now. Yeah. Oh, Snapchat Here's me right now so you can see a picture of me and my Here's twin. Here's the TV. Oh, would you stop? I love it. Number 12, <laughs> uh, the number 12 way is, is, shut your hole. is a Facebook comment. So if somebody like you like make something, you put a comment on it. Like, ha, 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 you're so funny. Or that's great. Or okay. nice work. Facebook comment, the uh-huh. number 12 way in this day and this age. This is flirting. To flirt with somebody. Send them an email is number 11. Seems pretty uh, cut and dry. You send an email and you say, hey, here we go. Uh, Twitter direct message. DM me. You ever hear, have somebody tell you mm-hmm. that? And that's what they mean. You send them a direct message. You get it. We occasionally will DM on the Twitter, but mostly we're we're just like at. tweeting out. Yeah, just tweet yeah. to us. A uh, retweet. The number nine way to flirt with somebody because it, it people like that. Like I tweeted something, uh-huh. and now you like it or me so much that you're retweeting <laughs> it. Bless you. That you're Thank retweeting you. it. Uh, you just go, and you know what that means. The Connie. Kind of uh, sneeze means oh. 708 957. Nope. You get a uh, Connie and Curtis Bless You t shirt. <laughs> we have one of these things for you if you're calling number 10 right now at 778 957. We do it whenever Connie That's sneezes. Funny. Whenever anybody sneezes on the show. We yep. did it last week when you sneezed. I sneezed one time on the radio in my entire life. Wasn't and it last week? It was like, but when we came up with the shirts is when I sneezed. I think I've only oh, sneezed one time. Then it must have been me sneezing. And then you time. sneeze. So anytime Connie sneezes, call her 10 778 gets a shirt. While we have the bless you shirts. While we have yeah. the bless you shirts. <laughs> uh, retweeting is the number nine. Number eight, call them. This is the first time we're speaking okay. to someone that we want to flirt with. Is uh, A voicemail, I guess, is one. Leave them a voicemail. But this is call them and actually talk to them. It says uh, you can have a conversation with them. Number seven way to flirt, handwritten note. That's nice. Look, Katie will leave grade. me notes sometimes, and it's it's nice. I feel a little warm inside. Yeah, Dan does that too. Like something that they posted on Facebook is number six, a Facebook like. Okay. Uh, again, that just shows, hey, I like what you're saying. Text them is number five. Google chat 
is number four. Uh, not a lot of people are uh, Google chatting uh, mm-hmm. who are not like logged into a computer all day. So it, you know that, hey, I'm thinking of you instead of doing my work. So that's a good way to flirt. Uh, favorite a tweet that they have had. That's where you click the little star. Mm-hmm. That's the number three way to flirt with someone. Number two, actually walk up and talk to them. Wow. That's the number two. Do you want to know what the number one way to flirt in 2014 is? Throw them a a look. An Instagram like. Which Instagram is seriously how Haley and her 12-year-old friends talk to one another. Is everything. I made this on Instagram, and then they all like it, and they all Mm -hmm. laugh, and boom, bloop, 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 bloop. We went to that Tween Stars Live, and uh, Elizabeth took a picture and put it on Instagram. She's nine. Mm -hmm. By the time we got home and we're back into Wi-Fi-ville, it had like uh, 35 likes, and that's all of her friends. Like Everyone had liked it, and it made her day. Like That's "Ah!" totally cute. She lit up. Now, Connie sneezed, 7708957. You get a bless you shirt. Who is this? Melissa. Hi, Melissa. We got you a shirt. Yay! All you have to do is just listen for one of us to sneeze, uh, or listen. Thank God, on a, I had dust in my nose. Or listen on a T-shirt Tuesday, and uh, and you've got them. Hold tight, Melissa. Uh, you can see that whole list of how to flirt and whatnot on my channel ninety five. Now, so that must be if you're flirting, looking to hook up with somebody, like yes. looking to have you know get a significant other or something. Because I definitely see people flirt a lot who like are married or in relationships, okay. and they flirt anyway. Like the talking, the talking yes. one. So the number Face two. Face-to-face, personal Number flirting. two, flirting. Well, mm-hmm. and you wouldn't be able to see a lot of the other flirtings right. happening. Right, uh, Unless you are like Facebook friends with somebody, and the one person is always liking everything that they post. Right. Or one person is always retweeting something. Like if you have a couple friends and you all follow each other, and one person is always retweeting something mm-hmm. that somebody else does, right. we are here to tell you that that's flirting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is some crazy flirting right there. But yeah, the the standard old just stand there talking to somebody. Now bump to number two. But I mean, it's a good standby. That's good it that works. it's still number two, though. It made the top Don't three. Don't you think always face to face is best? I mean, the Phone Instagram. Call, like actually having verbal communication where you can hear the person. There's no way to misinterpret. What right. somebody says. And a lot right. of times, like, I will try to uh, I try to say funny things, and I also try to type funny things. <laughs> and a lot of times, I will send them, like, to Katie. I will a group message, and she will be like, no one knows what you meant there. And I'll be like, well, you did. She's like, yes, I do, because I live with you this every single day. I thought day. it was funny because you texted me something last week, and then, like, I don't know, two minutes later, you texted LOL, and I'm like, does he really think that I don't think that's a joke? You never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, but I work with you I every know. single day. I know, but I've been so trained by, like, Tom, uh, where I have to follow it up with an, <laughs> yeah, a JK or an LOL, because I will send Tom <laughs> just random texts. Right. Like, during the week, I'll send him something, and he then takes offense to it. And then we'll send it back, like send me back a very long text explaining why he's doing things and why it's not okay for what I said. And yours was a joke. And I'm like, I'm kidding. And he's put so much thought into it. I'm like, if you just put so much thought into other things, like your appearance, we wouldn't have to worry about (laughs) this. Curtis, what are you talking about? The way you speak to people. Tom looks like he's going clubbing every day he comes here. Don't you think so? Is he? No. No, but he definitely does his hair, and you can tell his teeth are freshly brushed. But I'm saying, (laughs) you know, you don't want to look like the clubber. You want to look like like the guy who's here to get the job done. And that's all I'm all I'm saying. He looks nice every day. To you. To you. To everybody. And that's fine. And that's just because maybe he's listening that you're trying to like cover your face. No, he does look nice every day. No, he smells like he smells like uh Laundry. You always get so close I to I like his laundry smell. <laughs> I've never been close enough. When we first started working here, he thought I was so weird because I would stand next when to him. When we and first. I, and, but now he doesn't think it's weird. Now he gets it. But at the beginning, he I would be like, standing next to him and just sniff him. And he'd go, what are you doing? Yeah, you are like, weird. You smell like a dryer sheet. You smell like you just, like, you climbed out of the dryer. <laughs> yeah. And he thought that was so weird. So now sometimes I just... Put my nose. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you maybe you should blow your nose instead of sniffing that in. Was my throat. <laughs> maybe you should blow it. Connie blow and Curtis. It. Connie.